contract negotiations between Ravens and Lamar Jackson just took a turn because of this. Thank you, Kyler Murray. We appreciate everything you've done, but we're moving on now. Russell Wilson. This morning, it was announced that Russell Wilson and those Denver Broncos, they reached an agreement on a five-year, $245 million contract extension. Now, when you compare that to Kyler Murray's, he got a five-year, $230.5 million contract extension. Um, so this is about a $15 million difference in the overall possibility, maximum value of the contract. But... What matters the most in these contracts, as we all know, and if you didn't know, let, I'm here to tell you right now, what matters the most in these contracts is the guaranteed money. Because that is the money that's guaranteed. You ain't got to hit no incentives. You ain't got to hit no clauses in order to get the guaranteed money because it's yours no matter what. Kyler Murray, his total guaranteed money was $160 million. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, that's a lot of money. But Russell Wilson, he said, move over, Kyler. Even though you're super young, I'm 33 years old, and I'm still getting this bread. But he said, move over, Kyler. I'm way, way more accomplished than you, and I'm still getting paid. I'm here on my new team. Move over, Kyler. And instead of the 160 mil that uh, Kyler Murray got guaranteed, Russell Wilson is getting $165 million guaranteed. So... This shifts Lamar Jackson and the Ravens conversation from comparing Deshaun Watson and Kyler Murray's deal to comparing Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson's deal. Um, because obviously you, you got to go by the last contract. You got to go by the biggest contracts that happen and also the last contracts that happen. And I mean, the, I think the consensus is we won't know until we know. But the consensus around uh, the conversation is that it's, it's the holdup is probably the guaranteed money. And I mean, we would all figure that, right? Because Ravens, I mean, usually NF, NFL just in general, they don't normally do 100% guaranteed deals. That just doesn't happen like that. Um, but with Russell Wilson being the latest and greatest quarterback, uh, to get to to push up the guaranteed money that helps Lamar, but at the same time, the Ravens could look at that like, hey, look at Russell Wilson, look at everything he's accomplished already. Even though contracts are supposed to be about, they are supposed to be about the past for sure, but they're supposed to also be about the future. Um, so with Lamar Jackson, he's got to be looking at that. Ravens got to be looking at that. Like Ravens got to be looking at it like, yes, even though that they, they are still sweating. But they got to be looking at it like, yes, because Russell Wilson, the guarantees went up, but it wasn't fully guaranteed. So, yeah, we, we got some more leeway with that. But Lamar got to be looking at it like, yes, the guarantees went up. Hey, I'm much younger than Russell Wilson. My potential is, is probably greater than Russell Wilson's. And again, that's not a shot at Russell Wilson at all. But based off of what Lamar can do, especially what Lamar means to his team and everything that he has to do, everything that he's done already and had to do already and everything that he has to do. And then the age, too. Like, again, especially talking about potential. Russell Wilson, nice. Russell Wilson, he, he, he's one of them guys, man. But Lamar is, what, 25, 26? This, this dude is far younger than a Russell Wilson. So the potential uh, is far higher. But that leads us into this episode of questions from y'all. And before we get into it, a uh, special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. But now, special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean channel members. And you will know them in the comments section because next to each and every one of their comments, you'll see a nice little highlighted star. I ain't put the star there, but because their channel members, the star is there. So all of their comments, are gonna, they're going to be highlighted already and they're going to stand out already. But shout out to Travis B., my guy Dre Dog, uh, Coach J, and Aaron B. Appreciate y'all uh, being channel members. So if anybody would like to become a, a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz if you want to become a channel member. You can just click on the join button uh, next to subscribe. But if you already subscribed, then it's just going to say join. Um, if you want to, cool. If you don't want to, that's cool. It, no problem. Please don't feel pressured. Don't feel obligated. Don't feel none of that. 
because it is quite all right. I love y'all. Let's get into this episode and let's start off with the first question from Wanya. Hey, what's up, Engraven? Hope everything is good with you and the fam. I just wanted to get my perspective on this whole contract situation. And all I'm going to say is that if somehow the front office lets Lamar walk, it will be the biggest mistake of their lives. And we'd be going right back to the dark ages of being average and mediocre. But the problem with this situation is Ray, Ed, and Suggs aren't here anymore. Now, if the Ravens are hesitant because of how the Flacco deal went, it's kind of understandable. So I'm not sure what the holdup is, but Lamar isn't Flacco. And I think the front office seems to forget how Lamar saved this franchise and saved jobs. So I think they owe him whatever he wants. Because after 2000... And before 2012, we only had two real chances at a Super Bowl, which were 2006 and 2011. So all the other years were garbage years. And, well, I wouldn't say that now. I, I, I wouldn't say all the other years were garbage years. I mean, some of them were, but a lot of them weren't. So let, 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 let's, we can't do that now. But anyway, he said, um, plus Lamar wasn't even supposed to be drafted by us. He was going to the Patriots if we didn't trade back for him. I mean... We, we we can't really do the oh the the coulda woulda shoulda. We could talk about we could talk about what could have been, but it's not, that's not what happened. So I can't sit up here. Oh Lamar, he shouldn't even been drafted by us because he was drafted by the Ravens. The Ravens drafted him. They traded back in the first round and they got him. So I, I, I eh. so anyway. Uh, he said, but I'm going to leave it with this. You can always draft to find a QB, but talent like Lamar, who is a generational talented quarterback, is very rare. Oh, I, I ain't got no pushback on that one. I got no pushback at all on that one because that is 2,000% spot on. Um, he said they only come around once every few years. Once every few years? When the last time we seen some Lamar? Like Lamar. Some people try to compare him to RG3. And it's like, uh, no, RG3 was cool now. He was cool. I know a lot of people compare him to Vic. Uh, he's He's been better than Michael Vic. Vic was cool. I, I, I love Michael Vic, man. I love Michael Vick. Lamar's been better than Vick, though. But as far as generational talent, then, yeah, I, I think Vick would be closer to Lamar than RG3 was, in my opinion. But anyway, um, who does – oh, he said, who does your intro? I find myself rapping to it every time it comes on. <laughs> Team Keep It Clean for Life. Appreciate it, man. Uh, that's my guy Noah Darius. And appreciate you, man. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Uh, this is going to be an episode filled heavily with questions about Lamar Jackson's contract. I mean, as if y'all didn't already know. But anyway, next question came from my guy Marcus B. He said, mismanagement to the highest degree. What's up, Engraven? Just saw your video on a different perspective of Lamar Jackson's contract. Let this sink in for a moment. Okay, Let's see what sinks in. If, in fact, Lamar is on another team next year, that means we would have lost an MVP QB, a thousand-yard wide receiver, uh, a Pro Bowl tackle, and a gym at outside linebacker all in the last four years. So what good is accumulating all these draft picks if you can't even manage to keep the ones that ball out? Shaking my head. Ooh. Why you got to come with this so early in the morning, man? I'm recording this at 9.14 a.m. When y'all see this, it'll be a couple hours later. But still, man, why you got to come with this fire so early in the morning? For what? Relax, please. Relax. But, man. Um... So, yeah, that would have been, yeah, Lamar Jackson, a thousand-yard receiver. That would be Hollywood Brown. Uh, a Pro Bowl tackle, that would be Orlando Brown. A gym at outside linebacker. Um, you talking about um, Matt Judon? Um, don't forget uh, a first-round tight end and Hayden Hurst. I mean, we if we talking, let's have a conversation to the full, to the max. I love it, though, man. You 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 right. Is it fair? Next question came from my guy Deshaun. He said, now I know if you were the GM, you would ball out and give Lamar Jackson whatever he wants plus more. That's why I'm not the GM. This, this wouldn't even been a conversation. People, YouTubers and content creators and analysts and media, they wouldn't even be able to talk about this because this thing would have been done. But anyway, uh, he said, uh, well, what is your ideal deal for Lamar? Personally, for me, I think a seven-year, 300 Mill, uh, $300 million deal 
245 of that being guaranteed, or maybe even 250 since he shot down rumors of Ravens offering that. What do you think? Is that fair? Oof. So let me see. Seven years, 300 mil. Well, that's a long time. 300, seven. Oh, that's, that's 42 per year. Um, man, what Kyler get? Kyler got, well, I mean, Kyler ain't even a subject no more. We on uh, Russell Wilson. So Russell Wilson, uh, 245 per year on a five-year contract extension. Uh, 245 divided by five. Oh, that's 49. Oh, that's 49. Oh, that's 49. And now that the total for good, it's, it's really a seven year, $296 million deal. So let's do 296 divided by seven. And that's 42.2. Um, so I guess, uh, yeah, seven, seven year, 300 mil. Um, seven year, 300 mil with uh, 250 mil guarantee. That, that's, that's your deal. Um, if if he does a deal for that long, then you got to give him some like some some stake in the company, because usually I know Patrick Mahomes is like the exception, but usually quarterback deals will be like four years, maybe five years, something like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but with Lamar Jackson, like because because if you when you give them a, a four year five year deal, then that gives them a chance in a couple more years to renegotiate the whole thing. Uh, so they can get even more money. Um, but if you gave him a seven-year deal, yeah, Lamar would, obviously. And he is, well, as long as with the Ravens, he is expected to be your quarterback for the foreseeable, foreseeable future. So I like the deal from the Ravens' standpoint. But for Lamar Jackson's standpoint, I don't think it would be the best deal because it is so long. Like if you gave him a four- or five-year deal, so then in, in four or five years, Y'all come back to the table and renegotiate on something. That, well, actually, in three, four years, because you can do that uh, with one year left on a deal, you can renegotiate. Um, but on a seven-year deal, you got to wait till year six to renegotiate, and that would again, that would be nice for the Ravens because it would let them know, like, all right, this is what we got. We got this in place for at least the next six years. But for Lamar, I don't think it would be the best. Next question came from my guy Manuel. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. I was listening to your video about Lamar Jackson's perspective, and it made me think about the negotiations that were going on before the unicorn deal of the Browns uh, and Deshaun. He said doesn't deserve that kind of money. But anyway, but Shadi got mad at the Browns for that kind of deal they did, and I feel like I know why." I mean, of course we know why, because it's the Browns. They're in the same division, so Ravens got to look at that deal at least twice a year. Um, and, and they Ravens, of course, got their young quarterback coming up for a deal, too. So, you know, their young quarterback is going to be looking at that quarterback's money and be like, hey. So, oh, yeah, we know why. But anyway, let's see your why. He said he must have had Lamar with a sweet deal that was good for him uh, and Lamar. But then uh, here come the Browns and they brown the QB market, making Lamar's contract go so much up and that he is not willing to go there. I understand his perspective, but his philosophy of cheap don't work with greatness like Lamar. Uh, let's face it. They could have told Lamar by now, give us a number and we'll give it to you all guaranteed. Even if it comes from Bashadi's wallet, we'll give it to you. But they haven't. Uh, has the Ravens' philosophy not only in running the ball, uh, but on how much you give players met their match, and they don't know what to do with Lamar. Um, and he said, P.S., when Lamar wins the Super Bowl, he will effectively own the Ravens, and EDC and Bashadi have no say on it. Uh, so hopefully that does end up going down. Um, yeah, their, their, their philosophy, and this is a whole different type of philosophy when it comes to money, but this is like most of the NFL's philosophy anyway. Um, because most... There are hardly any contracts that are fully uh, guaranteed. There's usually always a little bit of, of leeway, even if it's just a little bit to where there's some stuff that's just not guaranteed. Uh, and especially with quarterbacks, too. I mean, again, we just saw today Russell Wilson got paid fat new contract, but not all of it was guaranteed. So this will be um, I want to say, is it the second deal after Deshaun Watson or is it the third? Because I don't remember. Um, hmm. Or is it the fourth? Because obviously Kyler Murray and uh, Russell Wilson got paid after Deshaun Watson. But I, I'm trying to remember if Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr, if they got paid before or after uh, Deshaun Watson, too. I, I, I just don't remember. But either way, um, this is not even just a Ravens philosophy thing. It's just an, an NFL type of thing with a lot of the contracts, even the bigger contracts. And obviously, since quarterbacks get the biggest contracts, uh, a lot of them are not. Well, really... 99% of them aren't all fully guaranteed. Um, so this is not just a Ravens thing. And, you know, Ravens don't want to make it a Ravens thing. Like, 
whether it was with, with Lamar or somebody else, they wouldn't want to make it a Ravens thing. So I think that's probably where the biggest pushback is coming from from them. Next question came from my guy, Yosef. He said, this is my shot at a Lamar deal. And Graven, hope all is well. Obviously, Lamar Jackson's contract is on everyone's mind. Here's my proposed deal. What do you think? Lamar, if a contract wouldn't be agreed upon, would likely be franchise tagged twice. The first year of the tag would be 45.5 mil guaranteed, and the second year would be 54.5 mil guaranteed. Uh, 100 mil in guaranteed total. Remember, even though they don't give a player long-term stability, franchise tags are fully guaranteed. That is true. That's true. But anyway, like we said, they, they are essentially... Big time one year prove it deals. But anyway, he said, What if the Ravens break down a contract as follows? 2022, he gets 23 mil, eight guaranteed, same as currently constructed. Uh, 2023, he gets 45.5 mil, 45.5 guaranteed, 100% guaranteed, same as franchise tag. 2024, 55.5 mil, 54.5 mil, fully guaranteed, same as franchise tag. <coughs> Excuse me, 2025, he gets 50 mil. Uh, 37.5 guaranteed, 75% of it guaranteed. 2026, 50 mil, 37.5 of it guaranteed, 75% guaranteed. Oof. Oh, man. Them numbers, they, they took me for a loop this morning. Uh, he said the contract is essentially this year, two franchise tag years of fully guaranteed money and two years of 100 mil with 75 guaranteed. Next five years, including this year, will be a five-year deal, 223 mil, 183 guaranteed. 82% of the contract guaranteed. All right, now, he did send this before uh, the Russell Wilson deal, but it does surpass uh, the Russell Wilson deal as far as the guaranteed, but not the overall. So, I think since it's, it's not more than the Russell Wilson deal, and again, this was no fault of his because he sent this before, so I would have to decline. A nice deal, but now Russell Wilson just, he, he changed the game. Now, the, the guarantees, though, are, are more. So that's, again, that's important. But the overall is important, too. Even though they, they a lot of times they'll put in these crazy escalators and these crazy incentives and whatnot. But, no, nah, I, I would, yeah, the Russell Wilson deal, it, it changed all of this stuff. Uh, he said Kyler Murray over his five-year deal having, has an average of 46 mil uh, with APY and guaranteed money of 40. Watson over his five-year deal has an average per year of 46 with an average per year and guaranteed money of 46. Uh, Lamar over his four-year deal would have an average per year of 50 with an average per year and guaranteed money of 43.75. Oh, okay. I appreciate this breakdown right here. He said Lamar will make more money per year than Kyler and Watson, tying Aaron Rodgers as the highest-paid quarterback on a per-year basis and would be smack in the middle of Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson in guaranteed average per year. Lamar will be set to hit the free agent market at 30 with two possibilities. The Ravens franchise tag him another two years and make another 100 mil and guaranteed. And he hits the free market at 32 uh, with the ability to cash in one last time. Assuming he doesn't play until he's 40. <laughs> Shout out to Brady. Shout out to what Russell Wilson said he wants to do. Um, but anyway, or two, he simply hits the open market at 30. Either gets paid a ridiculous number by the Ravens or another team and makes another 250 to 30, 300 mil. Uh, and recap, and we hey, we appreciate all this 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 excellent breakdown that you did. You you may be the Ravens GM one day, so they 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 gonna be blocking you from going on interviews like they did with Eric DaCosta for the longest. Anyway, he said in recap, this contract would essentially be a win for Lamar as well as a compromise. If the Ravens, that, that's negotiating right there, that's negotiation right there. Uh, but anyway, he said, if the Ravens' plan is to tag Lamar if a deal doesn't get done, guaranteeing the first two years of the proposed four-year extension, it shouldn't be an issue for them at all. After that, the remaining two years on the deal would have 75% of the money guaranteed, but would keep Lamar tied with Rodgers as the highest-paid quarterback. Lamar would reset the market for young quarterbacks in terms of average per year, but would compromise with EDC and the Ravens on average guaranteed money per year. He'd get in between Kyler and Watson. Keep up the good work. No, 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 no. You keep up the good work, Mr. Yosef GM. Y'all ready for a question that's not about Lamar Jackson's contract? Nah, I'm not either. Next question came from my guy, Ryan D. He said, what's up, Engraven? Been a subscriber for a couple years now, but I haven't been as active recently, so I apologize if this question has already been asked. Don't apologize. D don't, don't ever apologize for not being active on the chat. It's, it is okay. You have a life. People have lives. Everybody has lives. So stuff comes up, stuff happens. It is okay. You never have to apologize for that. But anyway, he said, at one point, do at what point do Ravens fans start getting mad at EDC? I'm really sick of these Homer fans that are looking at this Lamar contract situation and not blaming Eric DaCosta. I'm sorry, but if you can't get a deal done with your star franchise quarterback, then you're a bad GM, plain and simple. On top of that, he's had a star quarterback on a rookie deal for five years. Well, 
for four years. This is going to be the fifth year. But anyway, he said, and what did EDC do? Invest all his money on defense. Ooh, yeah, some of the biggest moves that went down. Uh, Marcus Peters, and he gave him contract extension. Marlon Humphrey gave him contract extension. And, and these guys deserve their contract extensions. Uh, brought over Calais Campbell. Um, he did sign Mark Andrews now to the contract extension and did sign Ronnie Stanley to a contract extension as well. So he's been giving his money uh, to both sides. Um, but as far as uh, as far as trades and whatnot and really bringing people in uh, that bring on the big money, that's been more favorable to the defensive side of the ball. And even like on offenses, there they have been the reports of them trying to get some guys on offense, but it obviously didn't work out. But then they really try. They really try for some guys on defense too. Now a lot of times it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But they 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 boy, they be trying. But like with Bobby Wagner. Well, anyway, and he, and he said, <clears throat> if you want to really get down to it, he hasn't been as good at drafting as everyone has been saying. Um, I, I think that's definitely been a conversation recently. Uh, because and like somebody brought out earlier about. The, a lot of guys getting traded away. A lot of his draft picks getting traded away. I mean, he just cut Tyree Phillips yesterday. Um, and not to say that you have to hold on to somebody if they're doing bad, but you drafted them to do good. And, hey, sometimes some stuff just doesn't work out. But, again, that, that's on you. You drafted them, and it didn't happen. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's definitely, uh, especially over the past couple of weeks, that has definitely been a big conversation. Uh, as far as his draft, and you look back at at, at, at his first couple of drafts, uh, and you just see a lack, uh, an overall lack of just production. Um, you just see a, it, there, there's a lack there. Uh, it's been getting, it's seemingly been getting better as far as the impact that uh, the amount of draft picks every year have been having. It's been getting better every year, and hopefully this year it gets even better. Preseason has started good now, so hopefully that transfers into the regular season too. Um, but it, it's definitely been a process. He said uh, he's hit on obvious first-round picks. That's about it. Let's look at those first-round picks, too. Hollywood drafted as the first receiver in a stacked wide receiver class. Patrick Queen has been very inconsistent. His highs are amazing, but his lows make him look like he doesn't belong in the league. Oof, wow. Ooh, you are rough. I'm an Oway believer, but the jury's still out on him. <clears throat> yeah, I think Oway's going to be nice, but you all right. He's, he's still got to gotta show it and then this preseason off to a good start just gotta stay healthy and he'll be good to go uh, i'm hopeful for this year's class but at the end of the day we haven't seen them in regular season action hey we were just saying that too um as much as it hurts to say with lamar's style of play he would have a better chance winning a super bowl almost anywhere else i mean he won an mvp with willie sneed as his best weapon but on top of that edc isn't even putting money there putting the money there for lamar come on and these Ravens fans still want to call EDC a top 5 to 10 GM? This is my rant, sorry. It's, it's long just hoping to hear your opinion because you're one of the few Ravens fans I know that'll keep it real. Maybe you'll even take me out of this thought. No, it's a, I, I, I mean, I ain't mad at you for feeling that way. Uh, and and I, re, I really respect uh, the honesty. Um, I, I, I've been somebody that, that feels like those first... For Because I know a lot of people's conversation, a lot, a lot of people's argument with Lamar Jackson the contract. They're like, oh, <clears throat> if you pay Lamar Jackson all that money, then this team is not going to be able to give Lamar Jackson weapons. And then a lot of people also say, hey, all you same people that are complaining about Lamar Jackson's weapons, ha, what's going to happen now if he's making all that money? Well, I mean, the, the Ravens have had four years of Lamar Jackson for the low. They've had four years of Lamar Jackson for the low. And they've tried in some ways and others they should have tried a lot harder. Because you tried with Hollywood. I think overall that worked well. I mean, in the end it didn't work out because he wanted to get traded two years ago. And now he's finally he's, he's gone. You tried with Bateman. We'll see what happens with that. Still early. He ain't even played a full year last year. Um, But as far as... Proven guys, he brought in an injury-prone Sammy Watkins, and he remained to be the same person. You brought in Willie Sneed, who was solid. Can't Willie Sneed wasn't bad; he was solid, but he was solid. You brought in Des Bryant. You brought in Seth Roberts. Um, yeah, it's it it's been pretty rough. Uh, as far as what they've brought in for Lamar, as far as proving guys to really help push him over the top. Um, 
and I and I, I said this before. I do feel like the Ravens have held him back. Um, I feel like just their their brand of football has held him back. And it, it was a nice introductory brand of football, but that's why a lot of uh, Ravens fans get frustrated because we're like, hey, this is like something serious here at quarterback position that Ravens have, but we just feel like they haven't maximized him. So that's a big frustration. Um, like you mentioned with the drafts, uh, there have been some hits in there, but there have been a, a lot of misses too. A lot of misses too. There have been some picks that almost feel like almost waste because they they get cut the same year that they get drafted. Uh, I mean, especially like, what was that last year with with Sean Wade and uh, and Ben Mason? It's like, huh? What? Like, what's going on with that? What was that about? Um, ben Bredesen, he's gone again. Tyree Phillips third round pick from two years ago. Now he's gone. Um, so EDC still he he. He, he, he has been has shown that he is a little more aggressive than Ozzie Newsom as far as making trades. But I, I feel like a, a lot of those trade, those fifth round pick trades, have been, they've been fun because Calais came and Marcus Peters and they've had been big impacts on this team. Um, but I feel like when it comes to the big money trades, so to speak, the like re really giving something significant up because the fifth round pick is like, oh, yeah, fifth round pick. OK, bye. And even if you lose in the trade, if you trade for somebody for a fifth round pick and they come like, oh, you need King Gakwe. I think that was, was that the, the highest trade that he gave up something for? I think. I and I forgot what the, what the, was it a third and a fifth that he gave up for Unique? Somebody please remind me because I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Um, and I, a lot of times I forget that they even traded for Unique and Gakwe. I forget about that one a lot. Um, but we, we just, we've been waiting on, and now I mean, I'm not expecting it now, but. I had been waiting on him to make that big trade on offense. And obviously, I like the wide receiver position, but never happened. Um, but I just I just feel like they, they haven't done the most to, to get, get the most out of Lamar. Um, and, hey, I hope that he doesn't go anywhere else. But I, I do feel that part, unfortunately, that somewhere else you would get a more maximized version of Lamar. Um, because... You, the other teams, they would still run the ball, but they wouldn't be playing this like old school uh, version of football. <clears throat> and the Ravens, you know, like we always say, Ravens, I feel like they, they didn't got to like scrap their whole philosophy. They ain't got to do that. Just make some, some up, upgrades. Just make some upgrades. That's it. Make, make a couple of upgrades, man, and, and you'll be good to go. So we'll see how it goes next question came from my guy Chazare. he said hey Raven, do you think the ravens can implement some plays where snoop and lamar are on the field at the same time just like the heisman package a couple seasons ago i think it could be creative and dangerous give me your thoughts Ooh, nah i um nah i just like the quarterbacks be quarterbacks i see what you're saying and yeah i remember the heisman package um uh nah i mm -mm. I mean, nah, I, I I wouldn't. They they already use Lamar. <laughs> they use this dude a lot, like just as a weapon in general, not even just as a quarterback, but as a weapon. Um, so no, nah, I don't think so. Next question came from my guy Knox. He said, "What's good, Engraving? I hope all is well." Not exactly a question, but I've been thinking about it a lot, and I need the flock to take this with a grain of salt. I used to think Lamar Jackson potentially going to the Miami Dolphins was never something to worry about, but uh, every day he's not signed, I start. To <laughs> Every day he's not signed, I start to worry more that it may happen. Uh, take the emotions out of it and look from, from it. Uh, look at it from a business perspective. If you're Lamar, what team would you rather be on? Uh, the team that's going to pay me. The team that's going to pay me the most money. Who that's going to be, we'll see. Uh, a team. Oh, never mind. I should have kept reading. He said a team that will give you whatever money you're asking for or a team that has yet to pay you after four years. <laughs> Almost five. <laughs> See how to do for it, man. Uh, he said, a team you know will invest heavily into you, surrounding you with elite receiving talent like Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, or a team that refuses to provide you an elite wide receiver. A team that allows you to show off your passing abilities in a pass-heavy offense, or a team that doesn't trust you enough to pass the ball and only wants to run. If I'm Lamar, it seems like an easy choice, and it's hard to believe Lamar doesn't see that too. Now, you know, again... The biggest thing right here is money. That that's the biggest thing, because like you mentioned, it is a business. Um, but then, when you bring the legacy part into it, because uh, again, with the Ravens, it's like 
who who knows what Lamar's thinking with the Ravens? I mean, he's publicly expressed, hey, I want to be a Raven for life. Love the Ravens, da 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 da. And that's great. Um but then it's like with us on this end, because again, we don't know what Lamar's thinking. But when you think about legacy, when you think about Lamar Jackson also saying, hey, I want to pass the ball more. I don't be wanting to run. Um, when you think about stuff like that, um, the fact that he has continuously had to prove to people that he's a quarterback. People have continuously, hey, no, he's a running back. No, he's had to prove that he's a quarterback. The way you use him is that quarterback, but you use him a lot like a running back too, especially when you design all this stuff. Um, so if he's thinking legacy too, is is it? I would think that there would be a hope for Ravens to make a shift in the way that they do stuff. Because you look at teams around the league, you see what's going on, and not that you got to be a copycat. Or, oh, we got to do what they're doing. No, you can still you can still do the running. The running ain't going nowhere. The good defense ain't got to go nowhere. But if Ravens could make significant more. Uh, adjustments in the passing game and actually really pass that ball significantly. Oh man, like just just do better at maximizing Lamar. But yeah, that's all the stuff that you mentioned are great points. He's got to be thinking about all of that stuff. But I think the money is the, certainly the biggest factor. Speaking of the Miami Dolphins, next question came from my guy Javo. He said, watching a video about Lamar Jackson to the Miami photo. Uh, and let's just not be Ravens fans for a second. How good and fast do you think that team will be? Lamar quarterback, Waddle, Hill, Jaseki, uh, Chase Edmonds, who all run at least 4-2 to 4-5. And can't forget how good their defense is as well. That Miami team would be smoking. Well, the, the keep it clean version. Next question. That's actually not about Lamar Jackson. It came from my guy Dominic. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are doing well. Over the many years, the Ravens have always had good tight ends. A few being Shannon Sharp, Todd Heap, Dennis Pitta, Owen Daniel, Ed Dixon, uh, Mark Andrews, and hopefully Isaiah Likely. Uh, my question is, in your opinion, how would you rank these guys and why? And if you had to choose three to be on the roster right now, who are you choosing? Three tight ends uh, for Ravens to be on the roster right now? I say Mark Andrews, Shannon Sharp, and Todd Heap. Um, Mark Andrews and Shannon Sharp, they give you that speed at tight end. Um, Todd Heap gives you that sure handed guy. Um, I couldn't say Dennis Peter just because of the hips, because the hips don't lie. Um, shout out to Shakir. Uh, yeah, that, that would be one of the only reasons I wouldn't put him on there. Uh, as far as the rest of these guys, Ed Dixon, no. Uh, hopefully Isaiah likely we'll, we'll see we'll, we'll see about him But Those proven guys those, those will be my guys Next question Well I guess really Comment came from my guy Asim He said uh, Again I do appreciate the show Only thing I got Is the worst thing Lamar Jackson can do Is win the Super Bowl this year The price is going to go up for the Ravens. And look at that. Lamar Jackson, he ain't even stepped on the football field yet. And that price just went up today. Next question had came from Rave Kingdom. And it was actually before the roster was set. Because he asked if we thought that. Uh, he said, we got a diamond in the rough. A steal. The name is Josh Ross. Yes, number 46, which played amazing in the preseason. He said, do you see him making a roster? Well, boom. There we go. He did it. Uh, he said, and if so, how much playing time do you think he should get during the season? Mm. Now, that's where it gets tricky because you got Josh Bynes, too. Obviously, Patrick Queen, where you got Josh Bynes, too. Um, I think, I don't know. I, I really don't know. It just depends on how Josh Bynes does. Because, obviously, Ravens are going to want to go with the proven thing right there at inside linebacker. You want to go with more of a, a, a short thing, so to speak. Um, but Ross is smart, man. He, he's very smart. And, he, and he, he reminds me of a Josh Bynes to where they don't have all the speed. They don't have the biggest burst in the world. They don't have the quickest acceleration in the world. But... They got it up here. So if you combine that and then you have Patrick Queen, actually, if you combine them together, it would be great. But uh, if you combine that with a Patrick Queen next to him, uh, he may be able to help Patrick Queen out a lot. And he may uh, help be able to slow down the process for Patrick Queen, too. So um, how much playing time he's going to get, uh, it, it just depends on uh, everything depends on uh, Josh Bynes to me. With, with Josh Ross Everything depends on Josh Bynes And the last question on this episode Came from my guy Greg and B-more He said what's up Of course I'm nervous about it But I think Lamar Jackson Will eventually sign with the Ravens Despite all the rumors And liking a tweet of him himself In the Dolphins uniform I think Lamar Jackson stays Still Even if it doesn't happen Until after the season I think the passing offense Will be better But if Lamar Jackson Isn't happy with my fellow Greg Greg Roman Like a lot of fans Seem not to be satisfied with him Could you see Lamar Giving the Ravens an ultimatum To get a new offensive coordinator Next season Or no contract If he doesn't Time before week one that would be an interesting one right there um 
I don't see look I mean it would be great if he would if if that was really what was holding him back from signing a deal with the Ravens um I would love for him to speak up but at the same time I don't see Lamar Jackson being like hey it's it's Greg Roman or, or me I don't see him not even necessarily throwing somebody under the bus even though he got thrown under the bus by Greg Roman a couple of times but it um I don't know man because I think it would be smart for his career because he got to take care of himself man. uh and you want to do the best you can possibly do now if he did give them an ultimatum um I think it would need to be an ultimatum to where all right um I, I just I, I I can't do it with Greg Roman as the offensive coordinator but allow me to choose who the offensive coordinator is going to be or allow me to be part of the process and actually legitimately be part of the process. Not just say, hey, Lamar, we we will like your input. And then you go in a completely different direction, but actually really allow him. And I think that he probably shouldn't even sign it until that next guy is picked, even though that next person who's picked, it would hopefully be for him and not just for the Ravens current philosophy. Hopefully be a guy who can just make a shift. But again, because. No matter who the offensive coordinator is, everything starts from the top with the Ravens as far as what they do and how they do it. Everything starts from the top. You can get whatever offensive coordinator you want to, but if you tell that offensive coordinator, hey, our primary focus is going to be to run that football and we want to play good defense, then that offensive coordinator, hey, I want a job? Okay, I'm falling in line with what the Ravens are trying to do. So... It's 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 not even more it's not even just about the offensive coordinator. It's about the Ravens and what they're trying to get done and how they're trying to get it done. But anyway, he said, for all we know though, uh, Lamar loves the offense and as it's been and is happy with Roman's performance. I do think Roman was the perfect OC to start Lamar Jackson's career, but I feel like maybe the offensive could have been a little better since after the 2019 season ended. Uh, have a great day, go Ravens! And a bonus, way early NFC pick for Super Bowl versus Ravens. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Ravens got to get there first. But anyway, he said, I'm thinking Ravens versus Rams. Oh, yeah, Rams. You got Bucks. You got Packers. You got, like, I don't know. You did say way too early, though. Wow, what timing? I was li literally getting up to go start editing this video. And Nazarene, appreciate you being a patron, by the way. Nazarene just sent this, literally just sent this question. He said, hey, what's good, fam? Hope the family is good. Uh, I just want to say that Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray contracts are the actual market price for guaranteed money. That is now facts, big bro. And if another player gets extended, it will be around those prices. No one is moved by the Browns' dumb move respectfully. They are silly. No other player is getting 200 guaranteed from what I see. Now, they probably offered him 250 mil or like 170, 180 mil guaranteed. That's how it's kind of looking. With that being said, he will probably have to test the market and see what other GMs think. Hey, um, yeah, the, that that is what the market is right now um, as far as fully guaranteed. Um, but I, I still do think the Ravens, they were moved by the Deshaun Watson contract and, and Lamar Jackson. He was certainly moved by the Deshaun Watson contract because it is an, an outlier or whatnot. It is an anomaly or whatnot. But at the same time, it's real. It happened. Um, so you you got to try. You got to try to get as close to that as you possibly can to get in fully guaranteed. Fully guaranteed deal. Like we know Kirk Cousin, he got it, but it was a three-year deal. It wasn't the big, but it, it was fully guaranteed. But if you're Lamar Jackson, you you were looking at that. That's like saying, "Hey, all these guys in, in my field of work, they this is what they get paid." But then there's that one guy. Wow, he getting all that money. Wow. You know what? No, I'm I'm, I'm not gonna try to get that. Now nah, for what? Oh, that's an anomaly. Why would I try to get that? You see, you see how it sounds. So Lamar definitely got to push as much as he can to get closer to Deshaun Watson with the fully guaranteed and then also the high average per year. But this is fun seeing how everything unfolds. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Like